Time and time again, this van proves to be super challenging to convert to electric. There have been many challenges. Number one, the batteries breaking on me, getting multiple different kinds of batteries, uh, finding the right BMS, burning through one of the BMSs, wiring the charger, figuring out, diagnosing the issues with the charger, many, many issues. It's almost like this thing didn't want to be built, but it's here. And one of the more challenging parts was diagnosing the issue I had with my charger. I had wired it up once, double checked, triple checked, quadruple checked, plugged it all in, and it wouldn't work. My issue came from the fact that I was not using the right outlet. Yep, that was all it was. I was trying to run the charger off of this little extension cord, which was throwing an error on the EVSC because I don't think it had the proper rated line current amount. Um, and so that was all the issue was. Nothing in my wiring, nothing with the charger, that was it. So it's often not where you look. But once I had the charger figured out, it was then time to figure out how we were gonna mount everything to the van. So that's what we're gonna get into next. The first step was figuring out how to mount the motor and its inverter. You wanna keep those connections close. Luckily, I have this service panel that uh, the Actis come with. I'm mounting it upside down, which isn't technically ideal for cooling, but it should work for this application. I just needed to adjust it a little bit, and uh, now the clearance looks like it works. After I figured out how we were going to mount the inverter, it's time to figure out how we're actually going to mount the motor and the transmission. Here I'm just using an LS mount to mock things up. I took off the transmission mounts, took a bunch of measurements, and then started redrawing them in Fusion 360 so I could make the appropriate adjustments to make sure that our axle angle would be correct once everything was mounted together. I actually didn't end up using that motor mount design that I uh, was showing on the screen. I scrapped that because it was just a bad design. It was multiple pieces welded together. It was heavy. It uh, fouled on the suspension. It just had a ton of issues. So I ended up going for something different. On this side of the motor, I ended up using a single piece of thick steel metal that's bent that mates right up to this uh, poly bushing that I've got up here. And uh, it's just one solid piece of metal, much stronger and honestly lighter, and just has all the clearance that we need for the rear suspension. I've got some updates. I spent the past four days trying to get this right rear axle back in. You can see we've got the motor fully mounted, everything painted, nice to put together. We've got the DC to DC converter mounted. I basically, there was a heat, heat shield right up there that I took off and I captured the bolt holes and then cut um, out of steel a new sheet of metal and welded some bolts on it so I could mount those upside down. I'll go over that a little bit more in depth when we get past this, but this has been the real problem child is this rear right axle. I've been trying to change the circlip because I thought it was the circlip. It was giving me issues. You know, this one too small. This one was too big and now it's kind of bent, if you can see. So I've got a bunch of replacement C-clips because the one circlips, I guess they're called, because <clears throat> the one that I had on the shaft, I bent to crap trying to get it off. So I had a little setup here where I uh, have my heat gun pointed at my vise with this, might still be hot, this uh, socket and the bent C-clip, which is this one right here. I had it wrapped around that socket and pressed in the vise so it could kind of reshape and get its circular form. Yeah. Now that the circlip is reshaped, I kind of went through that box of assorted circlips and looked to see which one matched up the closest. And it looks like this one is the right diameter, which is 25 millimeters. But 
you can see that the ends come in pretty significantly more than the original one. So I'm gonna cut those back with my Dremel. And then also, if you look at these side by side, this new one is thicker. And so I'm gonna use the sanding bit on my Dremel to kind of thin the sides of this circlip down so it matches the original one. Once I had figured out the circlips, it was time to attempt reinstalling this rear right axle. The best way I could figure out to do this was basically using the Dadeon axle beam to uh, leverage the actual CV, the actual shaft back into the uh, differential. So I'm just jacking it up here and it's applying pressure there and beginning to slide in. The other thing that I didn't really show or film, I mean, there's been a lot, there's been a lot of progress that I've kind of just had to do behind the scenes. Like you saw, I kind of assembled the motor mounts and welded them up as best I could. And the um, transmission mounts, I added uh, two inches um, to the OEM ones. I added two inches to this back one. And then in order to get it level at the right position, I actually had to add I think like 2.75 inches to the right transmission mount that hangs down. So um, this back one, it kind of sits, the, the whole uh, assembly sits at a little bit of an angle forward towards the front of the car where it meets up with the, uh, the drive shaft that goes to the front differential. So kind of had to do a little bit of, um, you know, math and, and, and prototyping. Uh, fabbed up two different versions. So here you can see, here's one version. This was just the, this is that side, that right side motor mount or transmission mount. Um, and this is just two inches from this hole to this hole. And when I did it that way, uh, the right side was actually higher. And so you can't just add two inches to the back and two inches to the side um, because it won't be level. So that's what I had to work out. And then uh, the rear left, CV boot was torn, um, so I had to regrease and replace that before this all went back together. Um, but now we can get on to some more fun things like installing uh, these new KYB shocks. Uh, they're a lot bigger than the OEM, which I have sitting here. These are the old ones. So you see, it's, I don't know, adds probably about two or so inches. Um, so that'll really make a big difference in the back. Um, I reinstalled the rear shackles. Uh, I ordered new bushings, new OEM bushings from Honda and replaced those and lubed them up before putting them in. So that's all good to go. Um, and so now I've got to put back together the rear left brake assembly, the drums, put these shocks on. Um, and do some wiring. But this is a huge step, so very excited about that. Well, it's been a minute. My camera broke, so all the clips in between um, from when that happened to now um, were shot on my iPhone. Uh, but we got a new camera. We're back in action. It's early in the morning before work. Um, just came down to get some work done. But the van is in a mess, basically. It's pretty messy, but we've got virtually all of our low voltage wiring. There are just a few little things um, that I need to do complete. And uh, we've got a lot of things routed up to the front. Um, the dash, you can probably see over my shoulder, is almost back together. And we're on to almost the final two sort of chapters, which is 
cooling and uh, the front suspension. Now, like you saw at the beginning of the video, we can actually start mounting the uh, inverter. Here I'm putting on the coolant fittings for the chill plate. All I did was use uh, four quarter 20 rib nuts on the bottom of this plate so I could secure the uh, inverter upside down. Now that that's done, it's time to move on to getting the batteries back into their box. But before I do that, I wanted to make sure that all of the um, coolant lines within the modules are safe. So I filled it with coolant and, and ran it through using one of the coolant pumps and then just tested each one of the modules to check for leaks or um, any coolant that I could see floating around uh, near the cells. I didn't find any issues with any of the modules, so we were good to go. I think today is the day that I'm gonna put in the first battery box. We'll see. There it is, there amidst all the mess. And yeah, it's ready to go. I don't really know what I'm waiting on. So I figure I'm just gonna put it in. These are the panels for the other battery box that uh, they just gotta be painted before I put the whole thing together. So I just sprayed those down, throttle clan a little bit. And um, yeah, now I think I'm gonna get started on prepping to hoist that thing under the van. It's gonna be insane. I couldn't really film the process of putting that first battery box in because it was just, it's the, the van is so low, my tripod is too high. Um, but under some kind of miracle, I thought I was gonna be fighting this thing for an hour. I was able to get it in, it probably took like 20 minutes or so. I haven't fully torqued everything down. It's kind of a weird angle, but you can see it there behind the drive shaft. So there's that one big mount there. It comes down from just the chassis. And then there are, I don't know if you can see on top there, behind there, there are two other big U mounts, three eighths inch bolts going through the frame rails. Um, yeah, so that first one is in. That's where the gas tank used to be. So I'm pretty stoked on that. I was really thinking that that was gonna be a huge chore. And I mean, it was, obviously, it's been like a year working on just that box, basically. But um, yeah, it went in with the batteries in it and it's pretty, pretty stable in there. I gave it a few pushes and um, yeah, nothing moved. So it's all, it's not hard mounted, so there's rubber. Um, that big mount on the side is a big LS mount and then I put just bushings in the pipe that I put through the frame um, that it's all bolted to. So there are a ton of mosquitoes in here also, which is very fun. But yeah, I mean, that is uh, great news. On to more. <laughs> 